just any better? Uh, well, I guess we'll find out. In uh, so far, so good. You, you sound great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I've been meaning to say that. Now here we are. Monday, everybody. Yo! Weird things. Yo. For you. Last weird things of the year. Yeah, that's it. We're done after this. Yeah, all of you who are forming a political action committee demanding more weird things between now and uh, 2021, get bent. For you. Sorry. That's we're what, yeah. we're, we're, we're making it the last out of spite. That's it. That's something that we're definitely doing. Yeah. We, 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 we all we, we had about 27 it. more episodes planned. Mm, Not going to happen uh, now. No. And it's your fault. It's you, uh, Icarus. So it's I'm your sorry. Fault. I shouldn't name name. No, but it's mostly Icarus. Like, I mean, mostly the man with the wax wings. It's mostly Icarus. It's just, you know, with the wings. Come on. I mean, what Not are you going to do with them? Fold them over yourself and wear them so you could get punched a lot until ultimately they become useless and serve no point to the plot of the movie. It's kind of like you could have cut those three minutes out of the Kind of. Fight scene. Sorry. I, I, oh, I, we're talking about Icarus, right? I just want to yeah. make sure. And it's fight with the sun. Of do we just okay. want to go? Do, do we just want to clear <laughs> out and talk about Wonder Woman the entire time? Because I'm here for it. I mean, I am too, man. Maybe <laughs> that'll be, be after. We can make this the whole hour. I mean, because Brian, we're, Brian, we're not going to be talking you, about it uh, uh, come, you know, 2021. That's for, for those, damn sure. For those of you who are, 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 are watching, Brian, that not only derailed this conversation before the show as we were streaming, but also derailed a previous, the last conversation we had off air before coming on. So you are primed to talk about Wonder Woman 84. Ah, there, I, don't, I don't really have much of a public opinion on this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a public opinion yep. on Captain Marvel now. I'll tell you that. Oh! <laughs> there you go. Breaking the glass ceiling. Dustin Robert Young. Yeah. I'm just disgusted with all the misogyny I've seen online <laughs> about this movie. This movie Wait, just... I, 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 have not, I have not been dialed in on that. Oh, I mean, just uh, so much uh, criticism of this movie. Just the misogyny run rampant. He's making jokes. I'm not... No. Or, I, so, I'm sorry, being, Bryce. Unlike, <laughs> unlike you, who, who just enjoys trampling uh, uh, all these, uh, these fine works of film. It's his deepest wish. You know, wish. I, I care. I care somebody, about representation Somebody once mattering. walked up, and he was in an out-of-date suit, and he grabbed Bryce's hands, and he said, what do you wish most for this movie? <laughs> and he says, I, I wish I was watching burn. Tenet again. <laughs> I wish I was watching Tenet again. <laughs> I will tell you this. <laughs> Oh, sh all right, should we just do it? Should we just talk about Wonder I mean, Woman 84? I mean, I, what other, what I mean, else do we have? We have news like, stories. We do have a weird thing. Okay, we do have news stories. But, but, but right. I, I have a feeling like, like look, uh, uh, the window, like, we're not going to care about this so by then, the time then, we get to next right, year. Then, like, then, it's, let's, then let's, we got to make a call on whether or not we're not I'm, I'm doing all it. In. I'm all in on doing okay. nothing for an hour and a half. Longer than the movie itself. Sorry. Almost three hours. Oh um, no, yeah, no, I don't. I don't think we have time for do uh, the runtime of the movie because that thing was long. Uh, so, so what are your suggestions? Uh, 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 that we just turn this into a spoiler cast for Wonder Woman eighty four, or do we even try to do the stories that that Andrew sent in? Uh, they're they're good stories, but we can do after things first and make it an after things thing again, like there we did last go. week. Oh, 
You want to do that before I things? Mean, all right. I mean, all right. I, 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 all right. I do have we a can suspicion do we'll end up with the world's Two shortest Two and a half hours things. of Wonder Woman <laughs> yeah. 84 talk. And then we're going to be like, wow, there was a starfish. Is all it right. the president? <laughs> I, don't I, don't want, I, yeah, I don't want this thing to mesh very awkward. <laughs> I think it's fine if we, if we do it for after things. <laughs> So, we, so we're going to do after things first. We're we're going to try to get the Wonder Woman eighty four out of our system. Oh, yeah, that's not going to exactly. happen though. Ah, we we, we uh, let let's go in order. Let's go. In got, order. Okay. We, yeah, we'll we'll just All make right. it a shorter episode. Okay, Brian. We don't have too too many stories, Brian, so that'd be good. Pinky promised me that you're not just going to keep making references and and that we're gonna <laughs> that we're gonna be like. Come on, you got a pinky promise me. Oh no, he's not putting the no, no! don't. He's the reverse pinky promising. He's pinky cursing you. No, no! don't. You... I've been pinky cursed. Oh no. Because <laughs> we're not going to be All able right, to fine. get through it's it. Fine, fine, fine. Okay, okay. Fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep. You with... didn't pinky promise. You didn't pinky promise. There we go. All, All right. right. Okay. All right. Well, let's, let's just jump into some weird things on here. Here we go. Mm. Three. Oh, ooh, ooh, I got to do one other thing. Oops, goodness. Uh -oh. I got that thing. There we go. Ah, that's what I like to see. All right. Going. That's going. All right. Here we go. In three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Weird Things Podcast, our last one here for 2020. And Bryce Castillo joined, as always, with Brian Brushwood. Hello. And Justin Robert Young. Hello. And Jermaine is dealing with a uh, household emergency today, so... Uh, he, uh, we'll see him in 2020. We can talk about it. The house transformed into a giant robot, and he only through his spellcraft and his shark invisibility suit is able to stop it. And the, the talking cat gave him a magical gun so that other people could use it. Yes, oh, but that's in a different timeline. That's right. Uh, this is the uh, the podcast all about the news of the weird. We've got a couple of good stories here. Uh, and join us for what will, I'm sure, be a fiery after things. Uh, yeah. Later oh, boy. Week. Yeah. When, no, we uh, <laughs> Definitely not kidding on that one. <laughs> yeah. So I got a few stories for you. First off, you might have seen this in the news. You remember we talked on this show, gosh, uh, maybe a month or so ago about uh, the new discovery in Pompeii that they had found that some brain tissue had been just in the right, the, the right situation, right circumstances to be crystallized in the uh, in the eruption of the Pompeii. Oh, Vesuvius. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, there's a new uh, a new discovery out of of Pompeii, uh, you, you you might have seen this. They have found. What do you think that they've? Uh, it, it, if do you guys know this? Already? I mean, no, no uh, I do not. But um, okay. if we live in a very good episode of Black Mirror, they discovered that those brains were in the mouth of another Pompeian. <laughs> not not quite. They have found this preserved uh, termopolium. Uh, this is a a, f a food counter. This is a. This was a food vendor. Our, it's a Chinese buffet. Uh, yeah, kind of. It looks like a like it's a, a subway. super salad. It's a subway. <laughs> it's it's a, it's it's uh it's it's, it's a Ruby Tuesdays. <laughs> it's, it's a counter with preserved uh preserved paintings of what what they believe uh to have been the food at the time. They found trays in that you see they've got little holes there, kind of like serving trays like you would have found at a like you find at a subway or something. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on. Go back, go back a couple of min uh, uh, seconds in that video. And, and by the way, audio saw... listeners, like you are not prepared for just how Whoa, whoa, right there. Right there. Ooh, that's a dog. So we see Yeah, we see <laughs> go back a little bit. Like so all of these things, if you look back and it's like, okay, these are all analogs Ducks, to the food chickens. that it would be Ugh, yeah, that dog. And it's a dog on a leash. It's not even a <laughs> wild dog. It's like, no, we kill domesticated dogs and serve them to you here. Also, the, this painting is so bright, it's very hard for me to... I mean, I assume that this is not a giant fraud, but but also... I, I thought this was a huge fraud also. I thought this was... This, but this is... Reuters reporting this. Um. Okay. Uh, 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 we do know that in history... They pretty much did everything we're doing now. As a matter of fact, there was a, a scene in Gladiator where he pauses to do a commercial announcement for a certain brand of olive oil or whatever. Uh, it was later cut because test audiences found that so unbelievable 
they couldn't accept it. Meanwhile, it was literally based on history. Really? Like, like, oh yeah, yeah. Like, like, like. Wow. Yeah. Like, no, uh, yeah. Gl- gl- gladiators had endorsement deals wow. and made extra side money off of them. I'm imagining little bronze patches put into their into their chest pieces of like. Yeah. You know. Oh no no no! Uh, 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 probably not at all an exaggeration. Wow. Wow. So, uh, uh, well, I, I guess that 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 tracks with this. So there are little holes in this in this counter. Uh, How- where food was 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 would have been served and stored, and get this, excavators also found uh, uh, remains of food. They actually found food. Are we this. about to get the first and Yelp apparently review one from sign Pompeii? of a? <laughs> yeah. We we also one piece of evidence that the owner's dog was there. <laughs> uh, Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, 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 traces of pork, fish, snails, and beef had been found in the containers, uh, which was called a testimony to the great variety of animal products used to prepare dishes. Uh, I mean, now I just want to see like a contemporary romantic comedy starring Vince Vaughn, where they serve themselves dishes from this exact buffet. I I, I don't know. Wait. Pompeii would actually make a great rom-com. Somebody has a bunch of like issues, relationship stuff. He's trying to get his act together, mm-hmm. finally has an yeah. epiphany, and then it doesn't matter because the world ends <laughs> like at that moment. I feel like me and you need to discuss what great rom-com means. <laughs> uh, well, okay. Great normally, Roman it's not Empire. Like, like, like when, yeah. Uh, come, uh, 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 calm down. It's only an explosion <laughs> of a volcano. Exactly. Yeah. No. If rom com stands for Roman completed story, then yes, that would certainly <laughs> have an ending. Nailed it. Uh, but normally, when Harry met Sally, doesn't end with both of them falling victim to a geological disaster, raining no, death but, upon but, but, them. No, but in the spirit of like uh, 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 Shaun of the Dead or something, you could set it as the backdrop of like, like the world's going to end. Nobody knows sure. it. This is somebody getting their, you know, a small town romantic, romantic stuff in order. He wants to go romantic to the romantic comedy, she... Shaun of the Dead. <laughs> well, it is. Wait, wait, hold on. Are you saying that ironically? Are, are we about is, to have no, a fist fight? It's not. Okay. It's a horror movie no, that has a, a romantic comedy. element. It's, it is a romantic uh, comedy. Set it's a horror with the comedy with nope. a romantic interest. Nope. It is a it is a romantic comedy set with the backdrop of a horror movie. <laughs> And, and, no, and it's not. I'm not, not, not going to move on. It's a romantic Teddy. comedy. <laughs> I don't, I don't agree with this. What are you talking about? What elements of it make it a romantic comedy? The opening scene, all of the middle scenes, and the final scene. When he does the opening, the is, opening scene I, where he and his girlfriend are talking through their relationship, all of up. the interstitials in which he balances his friendship and his is. Uh, uh, fraternity bro demeanor, uh, his other entanglements, the resolution of their relationship, and the fact that uh, he ends up friends with his best friend who's now a zombie, and they still play Xbox together, but he's learned and grown emotionally uh, uh, as he you're continues his relationship You're explaining a romantic forward. arc. That uh, is, and also, you're saying that that because of the existence of a romantic arc, that we're going to totally ignore the rest of the movie, which is very obviously a horror comedy. Okay, so is Titanic a historical documentary that happens to have romantic overtones, or is it a romance story set with the backdrop of the Titanic disaster? It's a survival epic that has a romantic arc to it it's Oof. part of a, a survival oh, epic okay okay okay, okay, okay this okay. is the last time it's you not and a I rom-com. have date night oh wait are at, you saying the that titanic theater. is a rom-com uh no it's a romantic story with the backdrop of the titanic sinking yes yeah it, it, it's but a survival Shaun of the Dead epic. is not that it is a romantic comedy with a uh with a horror pastiche as the background the horror and the comedy are not one What's and your two. favorite Romance romantic comedy? What would a traditionally understood romantic comedy? Uh, isn't it romantic with Rebel Wilson? She's great. But okay, oh, but that's a parody. That's oh, a I got parody you. Oh, busted! Of, you you straight up got it's busted. A you didn't expect me to have an answer, comedies. did you? No, I'm just curious. I'm trying to in, in, investigate where you're coming from on this. Uh, uh, uh all. So of you my... like so so 
so you like meta, meta stuff, and that's Correct. that's what leads you to mischaracterize uh, <laughs> all these movies. <laughs> <laughs> because you want to prove that you are smarter than everybody, and <laughs> and the only, and the way to do that is to say, oh no, this clear, this is definitely not what it's what it obviously is. It is this thing that I am bringing to it. Uh, if you are accusing me uh, of somebody who deeply believes that the thing a piece of art, especially cinematic movies, really is, oftentimes is beneath the surface while it claims to be something else, then yes, Your Honor, I will plead guilty to that. I believe that all <laughs> great things in cinema secret uh, pretend to be one thing while are actually something else. And what, what, what Shaun of the Dead is, is actually a romantic comedy, and what Titanic is, is actually a love story. And what but that is Pompeii that is the surface the reading of Titanic. Titanic doesn't present itself as anything other than an epic winner. romance. Why are we doing this? Structurally, it's structurally, it's, structurally, it's, <laughs> structurally, it's a survival epic. Structurally, uh, Shard of the Dead is a survival epic too, or, or a, 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 an action adventure, a, a survival action adventure, uh, uh, like chase movie where they're trying to keep ahead of things. Yeah, and I guess I guess also, uh, you know what? I, I, if, like, I, 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 I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm, drop my 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 guard right now, and and I'll yeah. speak sincerely. Uh, for example, like The Last of Us, I feel like is it, uh, the backdrop is the you know disaster horror movie of, of you know the the mind controlling funguses and all that stuff. But but that's not really what the story is about, and and certainly not what I played the game for or the sequel. It was a uh, it was about a, a you know a lost soul who found a surrogate daughter and all of that stuff. So 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 I, I do have a but tendency I... to skip straight to the the subtext and assume that's the real reason anybody's there. Yeah, I would just say that there's a whole genre of movies like Sleepless in Seattle and When Harry Met Sally that they would say, oh no, we are rom coms. Rom coms look and and value these things story wise that are not the main point at all of something like Shaun of the Dead. And it would be like saying like, oh, well, this rom-com that includes a, a creepy stalker is really a horror movie because it yeah. involves uh, a scary scene. Yeah, you're right. And, and I can totally understand, like at some point, it's like you have to take their word for it when they're claiming to be a certain thing. You know, like, like <laughs> yeah. for example, Cabin in the Woods claims to be a horror movie, but is really a satirical analysis of all of the meta commentary or whatever. Uh, but also that's Tucker not- and Dale versus Evil claims to be a horror movie, but what yeah. it really is is a send up of yeah. the genre or whatever. Yeah. And also like, I don't know, the, the Cabin in the Woods example, like that's not, that's not subtext. I mean, that's the last act of that movie is, is, is that's, them that's actually, actually the call, text of the calling is, it is out. literally yeah, yeah. is literally them just abandoning any plot pretense and Joss Whedon just reads his boring film essay in front of a camera. I don't know. I I, I rather like to. I, uh, I also like. I, yeah. Um. All right. We get another story. Overrated. Here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gentlemen, if I told you, if you went to the doctor and the doctor said. Oh no, Brian! Oh, we're jumping on the bed. I say, <laughs> screw you, doctor. I reject your diagnosis. I demand a second opinion from my friends over at the mattress firm. That's right. This episode brought to you by the mattress firm. Tom to Clancy's the mattress firm. <laughs> doctor, I got Michael Crichton. I got the wrong one. No, it's even better if it's Tom Clancy. It's even better. He's yeah. like, it's like a send up of John Grisham's. <laughs> He's just like, oh, there are fourteen expat yeah, mattresses in this room. Mattress firm, by the way. You. <laughs> I went from Clancy to, to Crichton, and it was Grisham. Look at that, the mattress firm. <laughs> They're all going to get together and each write one page. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Sponsored oh. by the mattress. Firm. They're going to make all the money because it's going to turn out to be like a geometric progression of how much money they make when each one contributes anything. <laughs> so you both go to the doctor. Crichton's there because they harvested his DNA. All right, and I'm and the doctor exactly. has diagnosed yeah, you with a dermatoglyphia. A dermatoglyphia. Uh, does, so, that, does that I mean a mold that I'm looks like a tattoo? I'm against dermatoglyphia. Uh, say a mole. What do you say, Brian? A, a mole, mole that looks, that like, looks a... like a tattoo. No. Is that that Quite. sounds like something like you would claim you have when somebody squints and says, "Is that barbed wire?" You're like, "No, I have a dermatoglyphia." A, a dermatoglyphia. No, it's, I've it's got. I've got. I've got broitis. And, <laughs> yeah. and, you're like, and you know, that... you know it because of this Chinese character that spells broitis. Yeah, but but 
that looks like three Greek characters. Are, were you in a fraternity? No, I have a dermatoglite. Now that's my receipt oh. from the subway that I went to. It's, that's, it's, that's it's right. the year it says 14 BC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll notice that I have five out of seven punches on my car. Yeah. I'm about to get a free sub. <laughs> Uh, Imagine that you were a, a frequent, uh, a frequent customer at that buffet, and they did that. They like etched it on your skin, and then you're about to go in for your free lunch, and, and that's that the day. volcano's going off, and you're like, "Man, there are days, and there, <laughs> there are, are days." days. <laughs> so the doctor says, "Well, uh, you can you can see you could see what 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 the what, what this manifests in on your person." Where where do you look for a dermatoglyphia? I mean, I'm guessing it's on the skin, right? Okay, yeah, it's on the skin. That's right. Yeah, so I mean, uh, uh, so something bad that, that on narrows your skin it down. <laughs> that looks like glyph. Uh, a, a, a dermatoglyphia. Picture. Wait, is that? Hold on, is that a birthmark that looks like a pirate ship? No. Okay. But I think you are. I think if you are. I had in, a birthmark wait, that on. looked like a pirate yeah. ship, or the Ninta, the the, the Pina, and the the, 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 the Santa, Santa Maria. Maria. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're saying but I wait would a not have. If you did have a birthmark that looked like a pirate ship, and it was on your tummy when you were hungry, would it look like it was sailing the seven seas? <laughs> <laughs> make it you make it uh, uh yeah wiggle, it would just like, be like rumbling yeah you're like man i gotta go to the pompeian buffet <laughs> i'm getting famished this <laughs> this ship is sailing <laughs> uh you think you're famished but you're banished you have taken too many times from the dog bin yeah. so we've run out of dogs the dog we're bin. out of dog and you're like i demand a refund give me whatever the the pompeian currency is uh, back. and then you turn to the camera and say life's rough sometimes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what else can go wrong <laughs> <laughs> So, ah, I'll tell you. On the China, never matter before. <laughs> There's something here. <laughs> so, uh, so, <laughs> so, uh, the BBC has uh, published a profile on a family uh, in Bangladesh or, or in in India. I'm not quite sure. Uh, a family that has congenital palmoplantar keratoderma. Uh, which has developed into secondary a dermatoglyphia. Ooh, hold on, break that down. Okay. Slower. A congenital. Yep. Uh, Pal that means yeah. that means inherited from birth. Palmo yeah. plantar. Palmo plantar. Uh, I know that a planter's wart is on your toes, so I think it has something to do with uh, 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 fingers Eat. or toes. Uh, Keratoderma. Keratoderma. Plantar fasciitis. Carat keratonin keratin something that's that's hair and fingernails. So something about. <gasps> All right, I think I, I think I'm getting closer. I think you are getting very close. I think this is close to like tree man disease, where you look like. Is a this tree. like long ass fingernails and like, like, toenails? Uh, well, well, if, if no, so, but so you're far, very close. He, here's what I think. I think these are warts. Ooh, I shouldn't have looked up tree man disease. Ooh. These these are warts that go crazy and spin out of control, and you end up looking like a tree. No, I think that's a little more extreme than what we're than what we're at here. Okay. Uh, what if what if it's what if it's something foot? Maybe it's like like your your skin on your foot just grows super thick, and you've got these these comical balls at, at the end of your legs, and you just start rolling around. Uh, yeah, good answer. Lock it in. <laughs> the the the, uh, uh, the the family um uh, the the Sarker family, uh. Uh, specifically, the men in this family do not have fingerprints. <gasps> oh, a family without like fingerprints, and uh, it, it is making life very difficult for them. Uh, they are not able to get driver's licenses because you need a fingerprint for that. Uh, Bangladesh has a national ID system, but you need a fingerprint for that. They had been, uh, they had managed to get a waiver through that. They still don't have a driver's license, uh, and that's tough because they use a, a motorcycle to, uh, uh, to you know, to to, to farm. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is a very tough one. Only a few families in the world have this. It has been dubbed uh, what is the what is it uh, uh, delayed immigration disease because it is it, uh, after a uh, excuse me immigration delay disease after a family who had trouble getting into the United States without fingerprints. Oh wow! 
Uh, so, but this is tough. I mean, think about how much we use fingerprints or other sorts of biometric data, and then just not having it at all. I is mean, is this something that could be solved with the prosthetic? Like, could you be issued a fingerprint from the government, and they would just give you like a a, a, a stamp or something that you'd keep on you to yeah. to be able to do a thing? You know what they could do is uh, because in and of itself, the problem is. That would be a security risk because, like, uh, you know, what if somebody steals your fingerprint or whatever? Yeah. But what if the two finger authentication? What what if the fingerprint that you were issued, the prosthetic, was basically built by an algorithm based on, for example, your retinal uh, 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 record? So uh, take something that is truly unique about your body, yeah. Reduce it to a number, make that number go back into a fingerprint and then it could become a prosthetic. I actually, I, 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 th I think, it, uh, I think you solved it, Justin. Well, I that think that's basically how like, like touch ID on your phone. That's basically how that works, right? It doesn't read your fingerprint. It, one part of the phone turns your fingerprint into a number and the security chip looks for the right number. Right. Right. Um, but, but in a world where, uh, where your thumbs don't, don't work for that you know mm -hmm. you you can't open your phone with the, with your thumbprint because you don't have an, a unique you know every time you touch it it gets a different number yeah. uh what, one of but, the alternatives but face id would work uh what one of the uh the alternatives in bangladesh that they they managed to get that national id card with is uh retinal scans and facial recognition um which uh, which helps but then you know in terms of looking at this as an accessibility problem well if you are twins you know, facial recognition, you know, we, you, you're probably going to be able to fool tw facial recognition, facial recognition between the two of you. And then I guess I don't know if retinal scans are, you know, if you have this, if a two uh, twins would have the same retinal scan. I, be I believe not. I, I believe uh, it'll be far enough that there'll be no problem on the retinal scans. But, hmm. but the face ID, uh, we had a couple of hacker friends come in for uh, Modern Rogue episodes earlier this year, yeah. and we asked them, like, uh, what do you trust the most? And no hesitation from both of them. They're like, Face ID. Face ID is really, really hard to mess with. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, the twin problem notwithstanding and the, uh, you know, the popularity of news articles about, you know, the, the one Face ID were, hacked! Right, yeah. exactly. But 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 beyond that, it seems like it's pretty good. But the weird part is, is um, none of that fixes the under duress part because there's um, uh, there's uh, three factors of identification. There's a thing you are, you know, biometrics. There's a thing you know, a password, and um, a thing you have, a, a thing you have, right? A, a physical fob or something like that. And so, uh, weirdly, even if you're able to nail the one, a thing you are. There, now you have to work through like, hey, do you for reals want to release $10 million to this person? Or are you doing this under duress? In which case, say a different password, in which case we'll wink and send the feds your way. Um, uh -huh. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, this is outside of the, you know, it seems like the Bangladeshi government ha was able to provide them an alternative. But like, for example, they can't, uh, they, they, the, the men in this family cannot buy a cell phone because to get a SIM card in Bangladesh, the companies require that you have a fingerprint. So the women of the family have the, all the phone accounts are in their name. <laughs> oh, wow. Sounds, so this is by sounds pretty ideal gender? if you ask me. <laughs> Uh, it, I, I think it depends on, I'm not quite sure. I believe it in this family, it's the men, but I think in some other cases, it's been only the women. Um, so there's, there, it is, but it is passed down, right? So um, Apu Sakar, who is, is uh, 22 in this story, like his grandfather had it and he didn't even know, he didn't even care because what were you using fingerprints for back in the day? Not, not much. Yeah. Um, so this is this is an interesting one. I think it's a, a good reminder of the importance of accessibility. Yeah, I, 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 I uh, hmm. the the simplest thing is to fault the system. But I, I think the system made fairly reasonable assumptions about human beings, like having fing fingerprints or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's about alternatives, not saying, I don't know, everyone needs to I don't know, do like blood drips to unlock their phone or something it it is one of those things where it's like ultimately <laughs> that's when i'll feel safe blood id one drip per, per open <laughs> i will always be dripping a b d i i definitely just watched gattaca <laughs> that's definitely how they get into work <laughs>
Uh, speaking of getting into work, you can help us get into work every week here on the Weird Things Podcast. If you go over to patreon.com slash weird things, throw us a buck an episode. It would mean the world. And you'll get after things uh, a couple of days early in your own easy RSS feed uh, where you'll get them both uh, both them just easy. You don't have to do a password or a sign in in your podcast app. Uh, you'll get email notifications when episodes come out. All sorts of good stuff. Patreon.com slash weird things. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, one last news story here. Octopuses. What What do you... Man, what? oh, these... Uh, <sighs> at it again. Oh, octopuses. I mean, I, de- I definitely watched that movie about the dude that made friends with the octopus. That was a great movie. Um, too smart. I've, I, I won't eat them anymore. Also, they keep predicting who's going to win soccer championships. I mean, what do we... <laughs> might as well have them move in with us. I don't know. I always like I like the octopus uh, uh, scam fraud thing that that is because you know how those work right where they just film the octopus doing all of the options and oh then and then they release it they publish afterwards. whatever the right one was mm. yeah um, so uh, what what would you describe the uh, the uh, personality traits of an octopus you said you mentioned smart earlier yeah uh, I think diligent mm, uh, and I uh, tr- pure. Conniving. Uh, hardworking. What about? Um, you know, in fact, really, their biggest flaw is that they try too hard. <laughs> they love too much. Yeah. Uh, well. Mm. Uh, that it, and too many tentacles. <laughs> they should have that, exactly three less. Three, Five is I, enough. <laughs> if it's enough for me, it's enough for them. Oh, exactly. Oh, it's no. about time we said that out loud. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, one thing that we have discovered is that octopuses will punch fish what oh i saw this yeah uh, octopi are the are the bully jocks of the sea they just like uh, uh th- this was a story over the the last week that apparently uh the only known uh a reason for this behavior is just because octopuses are kind of a-holes like they're so, doing so, it so, out so, of so it's like uh, so, I mean, so part I mean, of it oh. uh, part, part of it is um uh, collaborative hunting uh, uh, uh octopuses will work with smaller fish the fish will act as you know a uh, uh, f- uh, kind of a forward line looking for prey and the octopus will go in and can reach into nooks and crannies and they will share um in a lot of the cases uh, octopuses would do this punching uh move on other <laughs> fish to make sure that uh, what did they call it? There was equity in uh, in uh, in eating the prey. Everyone got a chance to to eat. Um, but in some of the situations, like kind of Justin was saying, there's not a lot of justification why they were doing punching. I mean, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Some fish gets too close to me. I'm gonna be a bit annoyed. I'll be able to give it a little, you know, Kim's convenience flick to the forehead there. Well, and also it's like. Um, uh, uh, you got eight limbs. Like if one of them hits a fish, like that's probably not even something that you think about, you know, I don't know. like, this like that, that's premeditated. It well, no, 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 it into just... a fist and then popped him. Yeah. All right. But also Brian, if you had three more limbs, then like you might just randomly do stuff like that. That, 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 that is that much less uh, uh, important to you. You're, you're, you're just dividing up your will by more limbs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I guess for this analog to work, it would have to be like four more mouths, like to tell other people, to tell each of the kids to knock it off. Knock it time. off. Hey. Don't make me come down there. Don't I'm make watching me. WW84. <laughs> I, I just thought it was really interesting. Partly the partly the fighting thing, but also the fact that octopi and and these smaller fishes will actually actually work together uh, to hunt prey in the water. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think that those uh, octopi are are fascinating uh, just in general. But I I did find it very. It, it was one of those great stories that just kind of went viral uh, uh, because you could just imagine. The idea of an octopus just being a jerk and punching fish, <laughs> like <laughs> mm. the working together thing. Like I assume it's at something slightly less than a than a full on like, hey, we're gonna plan. So, uh, for example, um, follow, I, I'm exploring this, so please forgive me if I'm totally wrong on this. Um, it's the difference between a flash mob 
versus a Twitter firestorm. So like in a flash mob, every, uh, there, there's some people who come up with a plan, everybody decides they're in on it. They all show up same place, same time. They all execute their roles as preordained. But then there's also like Twitter mobs that sort of semi-organically happen, like they start to coalesce on their own and then a few figures maybe maybe say the right inflammatory things to get other people all freaked out and fired up. Like, I, I wonder if, if the cooperation between, yeah, in hunts with, with fish and, and uh, octopi are, uh, which, which one of those it falls closer into. Yeah, uh, you know, they, they uh, mentioned in the paper that uh, it is a complex social network of interactions and that the punching may be a part of partner control mechanisms to prevent exploitation and ensure collaboration. So I guess the, the idea is like, hey, I've got, I've got the power here. I'm going to make sure we're all eating right um, uh, and, and fairly as, as we do this partnership. Because I, I think for most of the fish that the octopus does work with, it, it, the octopus could probably get it too. Could probably get those too. And, and we've also seen, even within human behavior, there are studies that indicate that when two humans are about to get into a fight, there's a big, big difference whether or not there's an audience there. Like once there's an audience there, the humans feel trapped into escalating this, this, this conflict. Um, however, they've also found that no matter how big, small, no matter what the gender, no matter what the ethnicity, no matter what the power dynamic is, the moment another human comes in, puts two arms out and says, you two knock it off, this isn't happening here. Whether they have the authority to do that or, or don't, it like 90 plus percent of the time, everything dif dif diffuses. And I, I wouldn't be surprised at all to hear that even interspecies, something like those laws govern, you know, uh, undersea rules. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I mean, we, when we think of, say, the food chain, right? You think of like, uh, you know, it's eat, eat or be eaten, and in here, you know, the octopus is kind of exerting a more, you know, collaborative uh, and an equal social structure where the other partners who are helping, you know, find and 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 signal out prey are are, are still getting, uh, still getting their due, even if they are not maybe apex, uh, hunter and gatherers. Yeah. That's interesting because I wonder if part of the dynamic, because evolutionary speaking, uh, you're going to drift into what works, right? Whatever gets everybody fed, everybody stays alive long enough to reproduce tends to be what everybody does. And what if, what if in this case, the octopus is the equivalent of somebody showing up wearing a referee's uniform or a security guard outfit or a police uh, uh, and again, we're back to humans, but um, there have been studies where they've sent people up and down the street to just issue random commands to people like, hey, you pick that up. You stand on the other side of that sign and all that stuff. And uh, if they're dressed, even if it's just in a sharp dress suit, uh, the compliance is much, much higher. I wonder if in a weird way, like just, you know, the, what you're saying the, is the, the octopus would or octopus world coming 2021. Uh, I, I mean, I'll sign up. I, 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 <laughs> one eighth, one, uh, one human for every eight limbs. Uh, no, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> well, I guess also part of this is us trying to process how fish understand getting punched. Like, is that something that is the end of the world for them? Or is that just like, eh? Being a fish. Yeah, because like you're in water, right? Sometimes it's the tide. Sometimes you get punched by an octopus. What are you going to do? Because it doesn't look like the punch. Like, if the octopus wanted to, it is close enough to these fish that it could, I, I believe, hurt them pretty badly. But this is, you know, in, it, uh, you know, we're looking at some of the video here. It's just pushing them out of the way here, right? Maybe, I, I, I suppose it also might be uh, kind of like the weird relationship between, like, uh, I don't know, border collies and sheep or whatever. You know, the, the yeah. hurting uh, like, like if the dog wanted to, it could take out a sheep. Sheep don't want to be taken out. They also don't want to get nipped. And the dog doesn't really give a rat's ass either way on, on, you know, uh, the sheep. It just wants them to all stay in a group. Yeah. So, so it could be that kind of thing. That I think is, is that that's the most compelling argument that I've heard so far. Like the idea that it's like, all right, no, we are cooperative here, but in the animal kingdom that doesn't happen by way of everybody's feelings being heard. And, and then everybody walking in the same direction in the animal kingdom, there is an element of, you know, a little physical brutality, but it's not the fish. You know, it's not the octopus, like I was bleeding in the fish in half or anything. Yeah. Right. It's just get out of here. Come on. We're trying to hunt. 
my, my octopus on the move, see? Not to yeah. mention, you're talking about two completely different species of animals. I mean, it's not like they, com like the, the way that they work in this hunting is that the fish kind of gives a little signal, but it's not like the octopus and the fish are talking. It's not like they have, you know, vo vocal dialogue. He just has to say, hey, you're done now. Here you go. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a little nip. Well, and and uh, I suppose in my mind, I'm thinking of it like a kind of a, a segmented brain where it's like each section of the brain is like, all I know is fish belong in a circle. You don't look like you're in a circle to me. Pop, pop. And then the fish is like, all I know is uh, food happens at the end of this. So if you're going to if you're going to be punching, I don't want to be near you, bro. And then, <laughs> and then off they go. Hey, I'm a fish over I'm here. I'm a fish. Hey. 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 <laughs> They call me King Calamari. Moving along. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you know what? That, that'll do it for weird things today. We're gonna we're gonna keep it a little shorter this week so we can get into uh, after things. I, w I will give a, a real quick pick. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith uh, holds up. It's great. You should watch it. Uh, I tricked my kids into watching it. They enjoyed it. I was really really surprised that the Rotten Tomatoes ratings were as low as they were. I think it was sixty percent. I'm looking at IMDb 6.5. None of that is merited. It's a fine, I, I suspect that a lot of it has not aged well because we've become more obsessed with the tabloid aspect of that relationship between the two principal actors. But I will say that all the action set pieces are great. The idea of taking the emotional difficulties of a marriage and fusing them with the action difficulties, certainly a lot better than True Lies. Uh, True Lies because it's weirdly about Arnold Schwarzenegger teasing uh, uh, the yogurt lady. Um, it's uh, 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 Mr. and Mrs. Smith is, is, is a fine movie. Nice. And it is a rom-com, yes. That is. <laughs> that, yes. yeah, is. that is a rom-com. An action rom-com. Oh, rom -com. Yo, you wouldn't call it an action movie. I see. All right. Hey, uh, I'm fishing over here. <laughs> no, that, that's, yeah. Because <laughs> the point of that movie is that there are action scenes amidst a romantic comedy. That's um, epic. Yeah. God, I watched a bunch of stuff over the weekend. What are we going to settle on? Oh, and, oh, I know what I'll pick. I do. I, I think uh, I know what you're about to pick because I want to hear about it. Uh... The Oculus Quest yeah. 2. Yeah. So, so, so I did not know that that was going to be in your life. Uh, yeah. Well, Ashley asked me what I wanted, and I was like, well, now that's something that I probably wouldn't buy for myself, or I keep thinking that I'm going to buy for myself, and then I don't. And so it's like, all right, if we just make the call, then the call is to be made. Let me tell you, this thing is the truth. Nobody else has said this on this show, and uh, I'm going to fully uh, uh, take credit for all of it. Um, it's not the 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 graphical power of the Vive, but boy, does it just open up a whole world when you're just slapping that some bitch on your head and going right into playing. Um, it's uh, 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 exceptional hardware. Um, Easy to charge, easy to start up. Uh, the game so far, I've not had a game where I was just like, oh, this is garbage. And and part of it is the fact that I kind of skipped about, you know, two years of game development because the vibe is just, you know, we wound up using this space for something else. And that is another benefit of, of Oculus is that just clear out something in your living room for right now. You don't got to put know, up light anything and... to your to your whatever's or like you just put it there you draw out your area that you're allowed to walk and boom you're in the world uh the games so far uh that i really spent a lot of time with obviously beat saber but um oh geez what was the 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 gun one it's Autica. basically like Nope. What was that? Uh, I, I, the Autica or the the one where you were killing people and moving uh forward the one you're killing people and moving forward. Oh, that yeah, one that was that Andrew's, uh, uh, Andrew's pick last week, I believe. Not super hot. It's the no, one. It's, it's it's done. It's it's kind of a rhythm game, but you're murdering people. Rhythm murder. That's what it's called. Yeah, I think it might be rhythm murder. Rhythm murder. No, it's jeez. Oh, it's something murder back. beats. Pistol back. Pistol whip. Uh, pistol whip. That's it. Yep. Yes. There you go. Pistol whip. Um, pistol whip is great. Super fun. Uh, 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 and, and, and just a great 
uh, a great sh- sign of where these kinds of games are. And then also it's like, and this is the thing that I'm, I'm sort of most excited about is that it really makes sort of networking easy. And there's a great mini golf game that uh, it's super easy to play with all your friends. And I'm just excited to do that. <laughs> nice. uh, uh, to and 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 it's just that much easier. Oh, also, I, I, uh, thrill of the fight. I also got, and I was not ready for exactly how much I would sweat through my shirt playing this game because you're just brought into it, and the next thing you know, you're punching and dodging and and doing all sorts of stuff. But uh, yeah, uh, uh, so far so good. Uh, nobody warned us, and I'm the first to confirm it. Uh, <laughs> Oculus Quest 2 is good. Nice. Uh, I got a pick. Uh, this is one of the many movies that came out on on Christmas. Uh, I I think there's a little there's a there's a there's a little bit of a conversation going on about it, but I think uh, I think overall it was a a, a really fun, uh, nice emotional uh, trip. It is Disney Pixar's Soul on Disney Plus. I, I think this is great. You know, we talked on Cord Killers a little bit, uh, I don't know, maybe a, a few, maybe a month or so ago, that like the trailer for this movie did not really tell you anything about what is going on in this movie, right? You know that this guy dies and he wants to get back into his body. Um, I think that's because the, some of the main strokes in this movie, if you saw them in the trailer, you would go, oh, wow, that's really... <laughs> You're just really doing this kind of story now, Pixar. Um, but it it ends up being being kind of sweet. I think if you are someone who likes, say, Parks and Rec or Upload or something, I think I think it's it's fun. It has a a few little. It it makes some some you know uh, world building decisions on uh, what the afterlife is or or well not necessarily the afterlife but but pre life really, um, and the 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 existence between the physical world and uh, uh, you know a meta world. Uh, but I, I think it's great. It's really well done. It's Pixar, so it looks it looks beautiful, and the the, the performances are great. I, I I think it's a, it's a lot of fun, and it's on Disney Plus, so uh, there's really like not a lot to lose by watching it. Also, it's only like an hour and a half long. It's not two and a half hours long. Thank God for that. So, uh, <laughs> and yet you managed to cry five times <laughs> at a Pompeian <laughs> buffet. It's insane. Ah. So uh, that's that's my pick. Soul. Um, yeah, it, it seemed. Uh, 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 Film discourse was back over the holiday season. A lot of talk about Soul and a lot of talk about the movie we're going to spend uh, chatting about in After Things. But it was actually kind of cool. I, I, like, I was like, oh, look, this is people talking about movies on the Internet. Uh, 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 what what a what a what is an amazing back. thing. What, yeah. uh, speaking of which, uh, longtime fans who are watching Court Killers and Spoiler in Time, we do our end of the year discussion or whatever, where Killies. we did our retrospective on 2020. I was shocked at how much really good content there was to talk about in a world where movies just kind of you know went away for the majority of the year, just didn't yeah. exist. And and I think like. The experience of seeing Soul and the the other movie we'll talk about in After Things, you know, seeing these big, expensive, big budget movies at home, like it was nice. And I think that like, you know, this is maybe what the movie studios don't want is for people to think, oh wow, actually staying home is 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 actually like pretty good for for most of the time. You can pause and you can turn subtitles on. Um, but then you get into a lot more complicated conversations about yeah. it. But uh, but I think it's it's it it was really interesting just to have. Just to have, especially like this all happened on one day, just this experience of, wow, I just watched like three huge feature films at home and it cost me as much as I was already paying for these services. So, uh, movies, ghosts, movies, stay home and see. Look at Hot them. take. They're going crazy. All right. Well, you know, uh, that's going to do it here for Weird Things. Uh, thank you for Brian and Justin. Uh, thank you to Andrew, who's out there. Thank you for a good 2020, everybody. We'll be back in 2021 with more stuff. Mm-hmm. It's been weird. Gosh darn right it has. All right. Well, um, do you guys need to take a break? or? or... Uh, yeah, I'll go pee real quick. And okay. My daughter has called me three times. Oh, I don't okay. know what's up. Uh, yeah, but, uh, uh, man, I, I just, I liked, I liked soul a lot. You should see soul. I I will. I will see soul. Uh, in fact, um, we were about to watch it and then, um, we were like farting around through Netflix and saw 
Kim's Convenience. And so we started watching a little bit of uh, the first season of Kim, Kim's Convenience, yeah. which I almost feel like I want to save because it's just a nice, fun show mm-hmm. that I feel like you don't want to overdo I, it because I don't want to binge it. Yeah. Like, you know, there's uh, uh, it's it's very pleasant and I don't want to unfairly compare because I'm sure it's gotten a billion comparisons to uh it's Creek, Creek yeah. because it's also a CBC show. And I'm sure that like, that's kind of a gift and a curse for them because like, obviously that shit's Creek exploding the way it does now puts a lot of attention on like, well, where'd that come from more? Mm-hmm. And it's certainly a contemporary fun comedy about the complications of family that, that doesn't underserve the negative elements, but doesn't make it too cynical. Um, although this is a little bit more of a cynical show than shit's Creek. Yeah, um, but also it's like not. I, I think it doesn't have the major arcs that Shit's Creek does. I mean, there I are think some that's, some yeah. movements, but there's not major like, you know, now here's a relationship that you're following now, and you know. Well, I mean, it's got. I think the big I mean, thing with the father with, with with the father and the son, but but even then, it's like that's something that is either going to resolve or never going to resolve. We presume it will resolve at some point. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, there's no metaphysical kind of larger story. It's not like they're going to lose the store, at least in this first season. There's right. no, you know, uh, now the, they have bills that they can't pay and they're trying to figure out how to make, uh, uh the money back or something like that. Like there's, it's um, a sitcom. I mean, it's a single camera sitcom, right? Like it's a good it's a good it one is. of those. And it's a good one of those. And that's like that's not what a I would lot say. of those right now. Um, so I think we'll we'll we'll, we'll save that. But Soul was definitely on the uh, on on the thing. If just because I wanted to be in on film discourse, yeah, film discourse is out. And I think I, I think there's a lot of really interesting conversations about Soul, right? You know, about um, how it handles a a black protagonist or a black main character, and. Um, and, and and his little buddy who voiced by Tina Fey and what what you know what what that means in in terms of reflecting real life experiences or not and um i think i think it's 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 the type of discourse that feels like yeah there's a lot i think there's a lot of valid um perspectives on kind of all of these different takes and it's and and it's for a good and it's over what i think is a is a good movie so it's it's like there's not this underlying bubble of like yeah. well, and also just it's a bad movie like we're gonna dissect a, a, this corpse this dead rotting corpse of a two and a half hour movie <laughs> I will say one, um, of, one of the weird things about watching Soul um, is that they don't at least when we watch it on Disney Plus it doesn't have the Pixar short in front of it I think I think if they, oh, really? if they did a short for this it might be like a separate item or something but it wasn't like put on the uh on the front of it, which was, I mean, I guess it's fine, right? I mean, just let me see the movie. But usually those shorts well, are really good, like the, the, the dumpling one that that uh, they did a year, a few years ago. Like that was really good. I like. But I think maybe they want to protect that for the the theatrical presentation. That when you go to the theater, you get a short and the movie. Like when you are watching it online, you get the movie because. When you buy the DVD, you get the movie. Yeah. It, and it might also be because I think on Disney Plus, they have like a Disney Shorts series or a, a Disney Shorts series coming. Like, I think it's Dream Spark or something. So it, it would also make sense to just be like, hey, if you want Pixar Shorts, they're going to be here on this other thing. And they're going to be collected yeah. in this other thing, which which also makes sense just from an organizational perspective. Um, also, the other, the other funny thing was like, that movie has like 20 minutes of credits after after the english credits it has got all of the like the voiceover uh, you know the different translated dub credits that they'll do on like original oh, yeah, stuff yeah. now yeah um, but it was very weird to be like in watching the credits and scrolling to the end to see if there's anything at the end and they're realizing like there's still 15 minutes what's what's good but it's like all of the languages that that do the dub yeah, you know it's it's interesting that this one came out on that they they burnt both of the Pixar movies for this year in free 
Disney Plus, and apparently next year they're going to be doing some of them as like Mulan style. Also, pay twenty dollars for it. Yeah, I guess if the price is right, I could see that. I mean, like, you know, they. It's not like these are uh, to 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 maybe be a. Little, I guess a little I guess they also it's not are like, like they're DreamWorks or you know some like low rent CG thing. I think they also just don't ever want to give up that kid market. They're just like, nope, the kid stuff. You come here, you buy this. You're just always going to have Disney. So here, boom, take take the yeah. take the this. Make make the take stuff the that's Pixar. for parents cost yeah. a little more. Cut, take a couple of steps, right? Because they were talking take about putting some of the the Hulu and the more adult stuff on Disney Plus in certain territories. Yeah, like the star stuff. But uh, uh, did did, oh, did you need a break, Justin? No, nah, let's go. That's ready to talk about. Talk about the movie? Oh, yeah. All right. Like a bullet that's been ejected from a cartridge to be hit with the wrist. We're ready to <laughs> fire fast and off target. Let's, okay, we'll, we'll talk about it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple times in the same movie for some reason. That's a bit they liked a lot. All right, here we go. In three, two, Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the After Things podcast, where we just kind of talk a while after after weird things. Usually, it's about creativity and being a professional. I guess I guess this is in the creative arts. You know, if we need to keep it to the concept. I'm Bryce Castillo, joined with Brian Brushwood. Hello, and Justin Robert Young. Hey, fellas. Uh, on on December 25th, uh, HBO mm-hmm. Max put out uh uh the what would this be the third big feature film in the post COVID pandemic after tenet after uh trolls world tour right i mean you would probably put i would even put Mulan, I, 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 maybe? Would, I, I would i would only put it in in the same category as as tenant in terms of like the, the the market that it wanted to fill mm. like this was a massive studio tent pole that would have otherwise um you know, uh, I mean, uh, let, let's put it this way: a gigantic part. All of the it, posters uh, the definitely here. had the words "only in theaters" for all a long year time. Long. <laughs> yeah. And yes. then, guess what? Not only in theaters. Yeah. Uh, of course, we are talking about the new uh, now HBO Max original Wonder Woman 1984. So, all three of us have seen this. Yeah, I yes. I believe I'm the only one that went to the movie theater, and even then, it was a weird, hesitant move where it's like. You know, Bonnie, we both had COVID. We can't catch it. We can't transmit it. Like, we have nothing to fear per the CDC. Before, you know, every and, and before anybody asks me, um, uh, every single study just seems to be putting that timeline as even longer and longer that it's safe to be out in the world, uh, no matter what variants are out there. So we, on purpose, decided, well, if we're just going to go watch it, Yes, let's light money on fire and go watch it in a room where none of our kids can find us and none of them are allowed to, you know, sass the movie and other people will be paid to bring us food and drink. So we did. It was so nostalgic for many reasons. One, being in a movie theater. Number two, um, having (laughs) having a big bill be presented to you at the end was weirdly nostalgic. Uh, uh, Also, all of the trailers being the same trailers i saw almost a year ago last Wait, really? time oh, i went so to the movie what, theaters what trailers no man. time no time to die uh, <laughs> like, James like, Bond, like, yeah. all, all, I, uh uh there was like two two others i was just like wow these are the same trailers were they for theatrical releases or like get it on premium vod no they they certainly acted oh they like are they were... not running anything that even oh, well, yeah. mentions vod in in a movie theater the, there was definitely like, one. They, 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 are, they are two steps away from running like, did you know televisions cause cancer? <laughs> we can't be sure, but you can't be unsure either. Uh, televisions, the hidden killer. Enjoy your safe movie. I, I, I don't know the uh, the name of the movie, but uh, Tom Holland's uh, uh, Spider-Man um, oh, uh, uh, and, and also uh, uh, Hannibal is in it. And it's the movie where men's thoughts can be read, but it's not a more romantic comedy. It's a battle mm. movie on a planet where men's minds can be read. What? Okay. <laughs> oh, you, do, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. It's a movie. I Look it up. We'll, we'll yeah. it up another time. Um, okay. Well, uh, so so we're talking about Wonder Woman 1984. So you saw, how did you see it in the theater? Because I had a feeling after watching Tenet 
and which I have some critical thoughts on, and Wonder Woman 1984, which I did not like, um, that if I was watching this in a theater where I could not pause the movie or like had spent a bunch of money on it, I would feel I would feel like I would have to like it a little more. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, I, th- I I am certain that that I liked it more because I spent money on it because um, like uh, around around halfway through. I was like, where am I at? Actually, about a third of the way through. I'm like, where am I at? And somewhere between a third and two thirds, I found that happy place. That happy place being, this is a fine Doctor Who episode. And as long as I decide this is a Doctor Who episode and I'm not actually at a movie theater and I'm not expecting a return to movie quality movies and I'm not comparing it to any other movie, as long as I'm only comparing it to every other Doctor Who episode I've I've ever seen, it was a fine Doctor Who episode. Uh, <laughs> wish granting the Mandalorian, crazy. Boy, so crazy. Extended long takes of, uh, of, 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 of people feeling the joy of flying, so be it. Uh, two hours, 30 plus run time, why not? Every minute is a minute away from my house and my family. <laughs> It's a joy. <laughs> this is, Everything's this a joy. The world's worst spa treatment for Brian instead of a yeah. movie. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of words you could put after world's worst. <laughs> like, it was not a great movie, and it was no. somehow worse than the first one. Uh, but I'm happy I went, and I'm happy I watched it in a the movie theater. That's that's my hot take. Justin, what was your experience seeing Wonder Woman 84? Much as right now we are watching pictures and videos of first responders and healthcare <laughs> workers getting vaccines uh. for the COVID-19 disease, about a year ago, I randomly read on the internet a script leak for this movie. Mm. Oh, wow. And as I can now say, it was 100% accurate. Oh. And I rolled my eyes and I was like, this is the dumbest idea I've ever heard of in my life. Like, why on earth would they do it? Like, of all the things, wishes? Like, that's how you bring back Chris Pine? That's why everybody is going crazy? That being said, I feel like I was inoculated to the fact that this is a bad shit insane idea it is it is crazy that patty jenkins or or jeff johns or whoever is behind this concept would write it it's even more ridiculous that they would shoot it and it is borderline insanity that somebody would look at the two and a half hour cut of that movie and go whoo man no fat how often does that happen let's just ship it two and a half hours perfect this rules like (laughs) I can't believe any of those three steps happened. That being said, I found myself at most points in the movie enjoying it more than I thought. And as soon as you realize that it was totally off the rails and there was like no connection to any sanity in any parts of this movie, but all the characters and the actors specifically, I feel like were into it. I thought Pedro Pascal, I mean, like, let me put it this way. If the acting wasn't as good as it was, it would have been walk out of the theater even if you were watching it at home. You would just leave your house because it (laughs) would have been unwatchably terrible. I honestly do not know that I would have finished it if I watched it at home. I'm very glad that I paid the money to be trapped and could not leave without... Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I I guess I'm just saying that I thought Pedro Pascal was... Charismatic. I thought that Gal Gadot remains a good uh, uh, Wonder Woman. And I thought Kirsten Wig, who was the biggest kind of wild card here, because we've seen Pedro Pascal do a bunch of really good stuff. We already saw Gal Gadot do this thing before. Uh, it was Kristen Wig that I thought was going to be the like, all right, well, how do you get the funny woman to do the serious thing? And I thought she was she was credible. Now, is it very difficult? silly is it very campy a hundred and fifty percent is it baffling that in a movie that seems to wear its 80s pastiche on its sleeve they play no 80s music one of the most cinematically defining elements of that genre yes indeed it is baffling that every moment you're like 
This is where they would normally play uh, uh, an 80s song. Uh, Your Honor, uh, uh, objection, minor objection. Uh, They do a fair amount of synth soundtrack, uh, which is, I believe, Hans Zimmer doing his best to be like, I remember some of the 80s. I do remember seeing in the credits a credit for uh, uh, Cars, but I don't, I couldn't place There were it. cars in the movie, Your I, Honor. I, I couldn't have placed I'm the sorry song you're so befuddled. <laughs> from the, from the, no, I, th- I think, Justin, you, it, I think in terms of the fattiness of the movie and the runtime of this movie, I watched this at home, just in my living room by myself. Um, I, I thought the, the fattiness of this movie is maybe its biggest flaw. Like, I, I, I already am so so with, with superhero movies at this point. Um, but the fact that like there's that entire beginning action sequence of the, of baby Diana doing uh, doing the Olympics doing the cheat yeah and doing a cheat which I guess I missed but it doesn't really matter because the whole point of that is so Robin Wright can say please don't cheat anymore it's not a good thing truth is the only thing that matters wishing We're gonna for take success two and a half doesn't hours. make you successful remember yeah. the word wish, <laughs> wish. yeah uh, it's like. We're like, all right, well, we've succinctly explained this moral. We're going to take another two hours and ten minutes to explain the moral again. <laughs> and Welcome to Wonder Woman 84, Gong. But I think I think the story beats are fine. I think it's fine if there's like a little opening flashback scene and we get to see, you know, all of the Amazonians and they're still alive. And, and you know, that, I think I think that's all... Uh, that that's those all of the beats are fine on paper, but, but they're all way too long or like don't do the first hour of this movie doesn't nothing happens in the first hour of this movie. We we spend the first hour just like table setting. Okay, she works at the museum and there's the yeah. TV guy and and it's not until like they are at the gala and he starts to like the w- Max Lord takes the stone where like anything actually happens and then and then chris pine shows up and then and then the movie has started and it it was insane to me i had a book i was gifted a book for christmas and i was reading this book and if i hadn't had this book in front of me i i would have not i wouldn't have made it the hour i wouldn't made it through that first hour it was it it was very frustrating um but just one last thing in terms of pacing so the to, to my eyes nothing happens in the first hour and then really wonder woman doesn't affect the plot i would say for the first two hours of this movie, or show up for most of the movie, she, like her like, interference weirdly, with Max Lord's plan. Wonder Woman has one like a uh, Pixar style fifteen minute <laughs> short in the beginning, <laughs> and then shows up an hour and a half uh, briefly because uh, like she tries, you know, she tries to find the stone and interfere with Max Lord's plan, but that doesn't that doesn't have changed his course of action at all. It's not until you know she's fighting Cheetah and uh, and, and giving you know, a big monologue about being true to yourself and everyone on earth is cool with it where she actually like affects anything. I think that's, that's, that's really <laughs> frustrating that, well, that she right, could so have just I, not I, been I, in this I, movie I, and the first two I, hours I, would be the same. Can I defend that part for uh, a second? Uh, because this uh, is what I, I actually, I want to hand you the full mic. If I could just real quick, one last note on the pacing. Uh, one thing that we forget happens when you go to actual movie theaters is that you don't get to pause and the family, you know, you can't say I'm going to go pee, pause it. I'll be right back or whatever. So Bonnie gets up and leaves and, and being a good partner, uh, I'm, I'm like, okay, uh, uh, make, make notes, make notes, make notes, make notes. She doesn't pee for a very long time, maybe three, four minutes. And she comes back and I lean over and I say, so he got an audience with the president and took over the president's mind and took over all of the president's powers and found out that there's a secret program that controls all televisions and that televisions touch people. And now his new plan is to touch everyone and get the whole world to wish and take over the entire world. And now they're trying to escape. And those are like, this was three minutes. This was th- <laughs> three it minutes. Moves. It moves at a certain <laughs> when it point. Decides, moves, when it decides to move. Right. Also three minutes deciding she could fly. Just deciding. And then last at wing of play. I, I, so, uh, I did kind of like the almost like Hulk like way that they invented right. for her to but then even in that scene, she that's not how she flies anymore. She doesn't use let the me, last let, let me let me let me let me we're, we're too far out. Okay. okay. Let me let me defend the fact that uh, of a thing that I like. And let me just say, by and large, I've been on the internet defending this movie 
uh, against <laughs> Hellfire and a lot of misogyny, might I point out, that we spent, <laughs> a, lot we spent a lot of years, <laughs> we spent right. a lot of years right. that any even mild <laughs> criticism of a female-driven action franchise That's why Justin's been using the hashtag Time's misogyny, Up. Misogyny. <laughs> time's Up. You've taken too long. <laughs> rampant internal misogyny with women <laughs> against this movie and outward misogyny by men who don't want to see women succeed a woman director and, and, and <laughs> many right, all women right, actors all right all right so let me just say that disgusting uh, <laughs> i did not suffer not having an opinion about captain marvel for three fucking years <laughs> so everybody could just be out here talking about the obvious flaws of this movie okay mm -hmm. oh. like that's i thought that's the new rules we all have to pretend the movies are good um here's the uh uh, uh the thing i did actually like about it genuinely this is a big overstuffed ridiculous mess of a movie and while we can appreciate the clockwork kind of timing of the Marvel movies, which are polished to a gleaming shine, usually, except for Captain Marvel, which was rote and bad and whoa, boring. Whoa, 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 whoa. This sounds like a new Justin. Did I well, just meet somebody? Well, because I liked Wonder Woman 84 because the thing that Wonder Woman 84 has is it doesn't resemble any other superhero movie at all that I've ever seen. It has a ridiculous premise. It, it, uh, uh, embraces it with gusto it gives it about an hour and a half more time than it really needs to to totally complete what it is i i would love to see the hour and 45 minute version of this because i kind of feel like if it was if this was an hour and 45 minutes It'd be great i feel like it would have like been pop 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 like you would have you would have ripped through this thing and people would have been like, well, that was big and loud and confusing. And also, at least Whoopi Goldberg gave consent before she got used as a sex doll in Ghosts. Uh, this poor mm. random underwear model. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No Can we consent? talk about that? Very dude? She strange. She was definitely straight up banging a dude who had his mind erased and then shows up for a cute little wink at the end where she's like, yeah, I hit that repeatedly. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> nice clown costume. We dressed you up in it while you were unconscious and having your mind erased would you like oh that's supposed to be the same guy that's the that's same the guy dude. that's so stupid that's even worse and i it's thought it was terrible uh, I don't it's like legitimately that awful Ugh. but even then i kind of dug in the moment knowing that she's doing something so horrifying and transgressive because that's the point she is embracing uh, of this monkey paw bargain that she has made and, and her arc through the movie is realizing that it is indeed a monkey paw bargain. I also love the fact that at a certain point they got tired of just trying to explain it as anything else other than a monkey paw and just started saying it's a oh, monkey paw. Oh, the monkey's paw. Like, we're doing a monkey's paw, we're everybody. We're doing a monkey's paw. I, I laughed out <laughs> loud when they were just like, oh, fuck it, monkey paw. It's a monkey paw. Man, uh, Sorry. Well, Ken from Chicago is not wrong. If genders were reversed, there would be riots. I don't know that there's a lot of money to be made in us exploring that, but but I oh, I, it's I, bad. I agree. I mean, it would look, it would be a oh, very no, no, no. bad. There's, it's, it's, there's it's no reason. There. It's out there. there there's yeah. no reason for that to be the case when just nuclear missiles missiles can just show up anywhere. Like it's not like they needed to have like lunch boxes turn into I ICBMs. Like <laughs> I, I, I think I think the idea is that that she. There is human cost to it. Like, and and that's why if he did just appear out of nowhere, then there would be less of a pull for her to be like, oh, we this needs to stop immediately. Like she yeah. is being an evil person. She's being just as evil, if not possibly more evil, than Kristen Wig as she embraces her her cheetah powers. And and I wish, given the runtime of this movie, that and some people were 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 mentioning in the chat kind of Oh, well, the movie has to set stuff up. But, like, the movie doesn't even use all of its time to set stuff up. It would be really great if we could see any of Diana's conflict about this exact thing. Or, like, we were talking about the invisible jet. Like, we have a whole, we have all of this preamble. But when they need to steal the invisible jet, she just says, oh, I've been learning to make things invisible and I'm not very good at yeah. it. And then she just does it really, really well. You could find 30 seconds to show her doing a little... The, the same 30 seconds, just 
a little bit earlier in the movie. Anywhere Maybe else Maybe opening movie. scene. She's like, uh, what are you doing? Uh, I used to be able to make stuff invisible. Uh, I'm just trying. Uh, anyway, because it's not put like, that aside for a moment. Like, I, I did. <laughs> like, I, like it, right it, there in the <laughs> It was very long into that invisible jet sequence that I realized, oh, we're doing the invisible jet. Like, I don't think there would have been any sort of spoilage of, like, seeing her, you know, figure out her weird mystic powers i mean the whole there's a whole arc the whole her whole arc is like oh i'm also losing my powers so i can have my boyfriend and we don't really see that other than like the two fight scenes that she's in and and, you know she she kind of is ineffective in both of those but it's not like we're seeing her like coughing blood into a napkin or like walking with a cane or anything to like kind of indicate like she is actually weaker Now, now that you're mentioning this i'm more angry at the invisible jet scene because not only did they introduce the method that saves the day like seconds before she does it, where, where, where ostensibly she's losing her power, but she does the most powerful thing she's ever done in a way that she's never done before. We also have the problem introduced 30 seconds before that. So Jet is taking off. Oh, shoot. I forgot to tell you. Radar. They could see us everywhere. (laughs) Solution. By the way, been working on invisibility. Also, making it invisible doesn't beat radar. (laughs) (laughs) Just just if I know, try to inject realism into it. Just just for a denouement. Like, like, oh, we got it. Also, today is the 4th of July. (laughs) (laughs) What the See, this is, I, 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 people keep telling me these are the reasons why this is a bad movie. And I keep thinking, it sounds rad to me. It sounds ridiculous. It's a big overstuffed bag of silly. Now, I will say this, that scene and about 40% of the movie not only should have been cut, but they feel like deleted scenes. Like watching the movie, I was like, oh, this seems like a scene that I would go into a DVD menu and hit like you know the, the the list and they'd be like oh i get why they would want to do it i understand why they cut it like that was like, like at least 30 percent of the movie while okay. i was watching it is like oh that's i get why they wanted to but this did not need to be in the movie. all of that stuff yes cut it for timing cut it because it's fatty cut it because it goes nowhere what one of the scenes that broke the movie was when they pause to have the kid touch his dad and say, I wish for your greatness, have the wind blow and have that pay off. Nothing. Not at all. My guess is Not that at is all. my donut, guess, baby. I feel like that's got to be like a sequel, a sequel garbage? thing or a spinoff Justice League 2 thing or something. Uh, cause they did. They did just announce uh, uh, Andrew on Twitter was was saying it's, it's always this, like, is, this is no, this has been one of Andrew's things. Let me let me vouch for andrew right now Mm -hmm. this has been an andrew main take since i met him when i was in high school like the the preemptive announcing of a sequel when a movie comes out when it's being controversially uh discussed is like that he has called that out since the 90s and Uh, and uh, i believe it, 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 it it's the way to throw people off the scent and and so you know they they've announced that uh, Wonder Woman three with Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot on board will happen, um, and it, so it wouldn't surprise me if that was like okay now the kid is gonna be uh, is gonna be I the I, thing I, I, I don't even think that they're that far along like like this is just the fact that like either they have it in their contracts that that there is another movie in that franchise but everything in the in all of show business is de- is determined in the next two months. You know, mm-hmm. like there, it, 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 there'll be a long road from here to there, in terms of how they do it, and and ultimately it'll determine or be determined by how much they want and how much, uh, the the movie makes. Because if, if they're already locked in for X amount of uh, a salary, then that's the reason why it doesn't happen. If it doesn't make a lot of money, they're like, well, it would have cost too much to bring you back, so now Wonder Woman three isn't going to happen. If that if that indeed is the case, but uh. Yeah, I the, the kid with Max Lord was interesting because Patty Jenkins is, I think, safe to say, a very touchy feely director, and yes. it was interesting to see her in the very Snyder influenced DC universe with Wonder Woman one, where there was a little bit of the like fish out of water touchy feely stuff that kind of came in 
in between, but all of her stuff on the island, all of her stuff in the war was very kind of gritty. And then it turned into Captain America in the final act. But like when you're talking about, oh, our villain is creating the the worst version of mustard gas that actually like collapses your face and stuff like that. It was a very realistic thing with more creative control. We get a movie that allegedly is the reason why Patty Jenkins got fired off of Thor, which was uh, for those of you who don't remember, Patty Jenkins was the original director of the first Thor, or maybe the second Thor, um, which she got fired because she wanted to take it in a very, touchy feely what happens when gods interact with humans kind of a uh, uh, direction. And that was not what Marvel wanted. I think their claim has been kind of proven out in terms of the bankability of that character, but this feels to me like what she wanted to do there. And I think it is, it's a mess. It's an absolute mess, but I don't know. I, I it's just not something that I'm going to see anywhere else. And And that's the one thing that I've liked about, DC this fitting into where DC is going we're like I rewatched I bought Aquaman right after this mm -hmm. and I re I didn't okay. watch the whole thing because that's another movie that's two uh, and a half hours I, I, okay uh, before you say your thing yeah I thought about Aquaman a lot and I thought about is this movie better or worse than Aquaman and I didn't have an instant answer but I think I like this movie better than Aquaman and you I need know to watch Aquaman uh -oh. okay all right well, I don't I won't say I won't sit here and say Aquaman is better than Wonder Woman 1984, but I liked watching Aquaman a lot more, I think. Yeah, you didn't pay fifty dollars for hot wings. I didn't pay fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I made hot wings at home. <laughs> um, uh yeah, I, so I I I skipped through Aquaman uh just going to kind of scenes that I knew that I liked or big moments that I knew that I liked. And I will say that while there is a glee to like, ah, fuck it. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm cursing. Guys. Uh, uh, there, there's a lot of like, ah, whatever. Let's just do it in both of the movies. Uh, Aqu I don't, this is a bizarre thing to say. Aquaman is so much more coherent than, <laughs> than Wonder Woman so, is. The most bonkers movie in the entire DC universe made more sense than oh, the very simple one that takes place at one unique time frame uh, uh, it is, relying it is, on retro. Aquaman is like a, a straight line of A to B in terms of storytelling compared to wonder woman especially considering it's like wonder woman spends a lot of time trying to figure out what this wishing thing is and like oh how do we stop the wishing thing uh, uh which isn't exactly the same task as like oh i need to uh, uh overtake the seven sea kingdoms by killing my brother like that, that seems like a taller task than like, oh, this guy's got the MacGuffin. Let's let's kill him <laughs> now. Like, yeah, he's just got the MacGuffin. Let's just go. Why don't we just go and, and, and get that get that out of his hands? Or like, let me realize like as soon as it, that she realizes, oh, the thing that's stopping me from doing that is the fact that I have gotten into a uh, a, a monkey paw situation is like, like, oh, okay, I need to learn the lesson that I learned when I was a girl. All right, can I? Can, can we get to the real issue of this movie? Uh, first of all, um, I know I enjoyed this movie much, much more the moment I decided it was a Doctor Who episode. A very long, yes. very fatty, very overproduced Doctor Who episode. Once I got there... Moffat, had, Moffat era, Moffat era Doctor Who. Bing, 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 which is like, yeah. out of nowhere, take a personal dispute, make it universal... And then suddenly remove all the stakes because of feelings, right? Whatever. Yes. Like, that's fine. Um, uh, once I decided that, I had a fine time watching it. It's not a good movie. It's nowhere nearly as good as the first one. Um, we could talk about how good or bad Aquaman is. However, the real headline here is that now you have a public opinion about Captain Marvel. And I want to hear well, it. Sure. So, all right. Yeah. Well, here's all I'll say about the first Wonder Woman. 
I thought the first Wonder Woman was competent. And I think that the first Wonder Woman was a movie that established Wonder Woman well. Correct. It made me want to root for Wonder Woman. But ultimately, it ended in the same way that every superhero movie ends with uh, a, a, an empty field where a big, crazy monster and there's flames around exactly what's happening and why they're punching and there's a lot of throwing of big things and the hero throwing the big thing back at the crazy monster uh it ended with the exact same ending as captain america so it's like i i dinged that movie in my mind for a lack of originality and so i felt that this movie despite the fact that it is drowning in a lot of very curious decisions that it spends an hour too long pondering i can't say that it's something that i ever saw before and i want to reward it for it in comparison <laughs> to captain marvel which is a movie that i similarly thought was a you know if, if patty jenkins finds her way to moffat era doctor who because she really wants to explain this story about wishes and and wanting to be something that the, the the desire of taking the, the 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 shortcut the cheap way out and why that's an important lesson to learn it's an even more important lesson to learn if for young girls uh then i'm i'm with that because at least they spent time trying to make it big razzle dazzly um captain marvel to me was was a, a movie that similarly had a very specific message it wanted to get across but by way of a very very boring and muddled story with a performance that i thought what that, that there was no performance in captain marvel that i thought came close to pedro pascal as max lord or as Kirst kristen wig as cheetah uh y yes both uh kristen wig and pedro pascal exuded joy in their manias and yes. it's hard for me to even call them evil characters they're just selfish characters however they're all also, also no they're definitely evil pedro pascal goes and talks to his kid and he's like i love you boy but also i i violated every law in history <laughs> like <laughs> i'm probably going to jail for as long as jails exist <laughs> i've all right anyway i'll see you later but go ahead but also Totally joyful. I felt genuine joy from, yes. from at least some of the characters. And even even Wonder Woman, I felt joy at brief moments. You know, uh, she's learning how to fly. Now, granted, we took 17 minutes to watch her do it and without explanation. And then she goes back to relying on uh, spider Manning off of uh, lightning bolts <laughs> for some reason. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> uh, but she seemed happy in that moment. Good God, is there no joy? in any character at any moment during all of Captain Marvel. It is a Agreed. joyless, soulless, characterless, awful, awful movie. It's awful. Wonder Woman 84 is orders, multiple orders of magnitude, better a movie than Captain Marvel. It's, that is an awful movie. Yes. I'm done. Uh, uh, no, uh, congratulations. <laughs> we, we have the exact same opinion because that's at, at the very least, the conflict for which uh, Wonder Woman g gets over in this is it's something that she learned as a child, uh, probably could have learned it a lot quicker, uh, probably could have learned it without aring this rando uh, by way of this delusion. Aring this uh, rando, <laughs> you're so right. <laughs> she, um, <laughs> an involuntary takeover it was a demonic possession a dead being took over the body and forced this this pinocchio to make all the boners uh, sorry uh, uh, to make all the sexes and then did a memory wipe afterwards with a magic roofie and it it's it, and she gives a beguiling smile like hey, i remember hitting that yesterday you know this whole movie takes three days right did you guys follow oh. the timeline? All uh, of this happened no, no. in three days. Don't don't worry. It felt like it. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah. Now all I can think of is the super dark turn that Beetlejuice could have taken if they had just done that Deo scene a little bit differently, <laughs> uh, and they had Wonder Woman's morals. Um, <laughs> 
Daylight but, come out. <laughs> I want to fantasize that this <laughs> random stranger is my old dead boyfriend. Day. Yeah. Let's dress Pisa him day, up. Pisa day, Pisa day, Pisa day. We put a silly costume on and another silly costume on and another silly okay, costume on. That, and all of this takes longer than this meeting with the president for some reason. That fashion montage didn't even make sense in like 80s fashion montages at all. Who right? is supposed to have good style? Who is not? And then also all of the looks look the same. They, they, they yeah. all look the same to me. Also, they're just going through that dude's stuff. Is that is that what that is? Is they, they, Oh, yeah. Look, no, no, no. I saw it wasn't color. enough. Wasn't enough that they aren't him. They then <laughs> plundered. <laughs> Upstream color was not a comedy. Um, yeah. So I would I would say um, there at least is a personal connection for which she is getting over. It's way too long. It's way ridiculous. But uh, uh, there's nothing like the 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 big win in. In Captain Marvel is, she's like, oh yeah, I'm Captain Marvel. Get out of here, man! Who said I wasn't? I'm literally made of a, an energon cube. In Transformers words, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I now have an opinion on that movie because uh, apparently we're not doing the misogyny thing anymore. Uh, people can just have opinions about movies that star women on the internet. Uh, I, I gotta say, I'm not a fan. I liked it the way it was, where we all pretended that all the movies that starred women were really, really great, and they all got four stars in the New York Times. Um, and uh, uh, I'm I'm gonna be policing it. I'm gonna be a vigilante, a Twitter vigilante, just calling everybody with a negative opinion of Wonder Woman '84 a misogynist. Oh, well, I mean, but that sounds like something you would do if you didn't have power. And when will you realize, Justin? As I've been telling you this whole movie long, you are powerful. Oh, crap. Bah! Got you, Jude Law! Oh, <laughs> wasn't that a great fight scene? Um, yeah. Um, okay. Well, uh, did, did, did we cover all the bases? Yeah. Do you want to pick apart, here, pick apart, you wanna pick apart my, 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 my film discourse critique? Uh, well, be before you do, let me just uh, 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 put down uh, Wonder Woman, best female superhero-centric movie, uh, uh, then Wonder Woman 84, very last place. Uh, Captain Marvel, also some above all of them, just just cut out all the scenes of Gamora in Guardians of the Galaxy. She's great. Mm, <laughs> there's there's a yeah. billion other examples that go above that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I I think like I don't know the I I, I think that. Like the message of this movie is is fine, right? I think I watched I watched the first Wonder Woman before seeing eighty four because I had not seen that either, and what'd I thought, what'd you think of that one? Um, I think that it's it's interesting that they position her as um you know not a a superhero of justice but a superhero quote of love, um, which explains a lot of her questionable morals. I think here in eighty four quite a lot. Um, if if it was Superman, we would all be going. Superman doesn't do this. Superman doesn't doesn't just let people's bodies get stolen. Like I I kind of like that vulnerability that that continues through. But I think Wonder Woman, the first movie, um, kind of doesn't. Uh, uh, in terms of making a lot of sense, it, you spend all that movie thinking there's absolutely no way that the thing that she's saying is true at all. There's no hints at all that she is actually following Ares, the god of war through any of this stuff other than pure, complete, unbridled happenstance. And then she's right at the end of the movie. It's like, yeah. it's it's, uh, it's the same issue I had with Space Force. It's, I don't like when dumb people luck, on, luck into being correct because I, 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 I don't think that it's just justified in any way. In terms I of, get it. You don't want to be on night attack anymore. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but overall, I think like th that movie at least is straightforward and it makes you're following and the, the the pacing and stuff is good and there are big action set pieces and even if the ending is you know pretty much the same thing as uh was it civil war where there's a big fight in an airport um uh, you no, know no 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 the first captain america literally it's it's the exact thing that leads to except instead of the chris dying he goes into the ice and then wakes up many years later which apparently mm. this chris does in this movie too yeah, well, I I also haven't seen the Captain America movies either, um, uh, but um, uh, so so I I I don't know. I just I I know there's a there is a good movie in here, and and um uh, and 
there's a world where someone cuts up this movie into into something. Um, the, there's there's something a, much more uh, acceptably mediocre for this genre of movies. There's a more fun version of this movie. Yeah, I don't know if the flaws of the film will ever be kind of like totally washed away because I do think that there are there are massive script issues here. If, if you if, if what you want is a coherent movie. The one thing I will say is that if DC is positioning themselves as a place where they're not going to necessarily think five steps ahead and they're just going to give these directors a lot of uh, a runway to do whatever they want. And every once in a while you get big, ugly, overlong, overstuffed messes, then I'm fine with it because I think we've got I would rather them do that than try to emulate Marvel. Like Marvel right now is great. It is great at doing what they want to do with a few misfires. Like they they are are pretty much like on a rail. Uh, in in all these movies, kind of feel alike. We know these characters. They all kind of make the same sort of quips. And and boom boom boom, you're in and out of the theater. You're ready for the next chapter. These are big, long, hairy uh, uh movies. I do think that Aquaman is a better version of it. I think it's a more coherent version of it. Uh, and there's more joy there. Uh, but the performances here I like. Uh, uh, and and again, it's I'm going to give it credit for being a, a, a superhero movie that I will never see again. Yeah. And and uh, I, I, I don't want to understate the level of credit that it deserves for doing that. I, I've never seen a superhero mega franchise do this kind of thing. Yeah. And and part of me admires the perhaps simplistic poetry of setting it in the early 80s in a time when everybody, all of these boomers were now becoming yuppies and felt entitled to, you know, uh, uh, free success and and just wish it and it'll come true or whatever. Uh, I, I, I think there's a lot there. I think uh, very little of what could have come out did, but that's fine. Um, if we're grading on a scale, you know, on a curve, it's like I said, it's 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 a fine Doctor Who episode. It is light years ahead of uh, Captain Marvel, and uh, uh, there was, even if it was boring and slow at times, there was a lot of joy in there. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I, man, remember when Krista Wig is Cheetah, and after she becomes Cheetah, but she's not like full cat's Cheetah yet. Uh, where she's just like Krista Wig Cheetah, and uh, she runs into that creep from the park, and then she like totally beats a living hell out of him, and then yeah. like right on cue, her homeless friend like just <laughs> is there watching, and just like, what are you doing? Like, 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 uh, this is not the nice lady I knew. I, yeah. And then she turns and, into the movie Cats. And then she's like, Psss. <laughs> and then like backflips out. <laughs> oh um, okay. Um, uh, any, any other last thoughts on Wonder Woman 84? Uh, I am very glad it exists. I am less glad that I saw it. I'm super glad that I didn't see it at home. Uh, I am... I'm just glad film discussions are back. I love it. I love it, man. I didn't realize how much I missed it until everybody had an opinion on Wonder Woman. And uh, uh, I will spend the rest of my days rooting out misogynists. Uh, I was, well, <laughs> I was saying uh, a similar effect in, uh, in our picks on weird things, but like, you know, I think there's a lot of really good discussion going around the new Pixar movie soul. And um, it's it feels refreshing, especially in in terms of that movie, because I think that that is a very a beyond competent. I think that's a very well made movie, um, and and it provokes a lot of good good questions about uh, about the things that are represented there. I I am not so sure about Wonder Woman, just because it's also not a good movie in in my opinion, and I think that that can make discussions kind of uh, skewed a little bit i think it gives a okay. lot of people a chance to say oh well we all don't like this movie no, i don't know real quick chris pine robot in the third movie he's a robot he's a robot in the third movie right oh oh they're gonna bring him back again oh of course I, wait, wait, do... what are you gonna not i mean come on you do it you said it in modern day she's right? gotta bone someone and <laughs> it's not like she's not gonna bone someone and 
you know. Right. And he, they need a they, robot they, to, they to already shut off. Mind controlled an innocent stranger and, you know, R worded him and rated his, R'd, R'd mocked his laundry the entire movie long and then winked <laughs> as, as they encountered him afterwards, knowing that he was ignorant of the whole thing because he had his mind wiped. Yeah. Man. Yeah. You ever do you think that there was a scene they cut? The only scene they cut was Wonder Woman when they have that meet cute at the very end of the movie and she just goes, uh, I've seen your penis. <laughs> and he goes, What? And she goes, Nothing, and then walks away. <laughs> but his face changed. Anyway. Um, all right. Well, uh, everybody, thank you for listening to After Things. We will be back in the new year with uh, uh with more uh maybe not a lot of this, but uh some of the stuff that After Things usually is. Uh, thank yeah. you for uh, Brian, Justin, and Andrew. I'm Bryce, and it's been after. See ya. Kim from Chicago is not exaggerating. Put that on my tombstone. Steve's a robot. She's got to bone someone, and it can't be <laughs> literally anyway. Because heaven forbid a woman should move on from one relationship. Like, that's the weird part. For all, for, well, for all of this I mean, feminism that's... empowerment... Uh, and for all of this anti-bullet, anti-gun stuff, and 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 I, I, I understand. It's like you you set a style guide and you have to work yeah. around those. Like like she doesn't do guns. You know, guns are only to be deflected, but bullets are cool. But bullets don't go into other humans or whatever. I understand all of that, but that weird obsession, like heaven forbid a woman should move beyond a past relationship, that any widow should go on to have a second life. Uh, God forbid, God forbid. Well, I, she is a I, God, I, so. She it's is her, a God. Her call. Yes. And also for her, 70 years is like two weeks. She's going to live forever. Like this is, you know, we're, 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 we're on a different time Which makes sense because this here. movie was the length of a YouTube video to her. Yeah, basically, <laughs> basically. No, I, I, I totally agree when I was watching. It's like, because they're, they don't even like set up like her going to like a World War I memorial or something to be like, oh, yeah, Steve. <sighs> Hell of a pain on Steve, man. <laughs> what a great guy that I was with during that war. Like, uh, man, like she's just like, yeah, this is just what I do. Wake up and go to my closet where I keep my, 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 uh, 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 toy thing that we're really only making so we can make toys. Um, and, and, uh, uh you're talking it, about that super helpful armor that showed up for one scene armor. and yeah. existed only for the purpose of getting beat to hell. <laughs> it's so you can sell the toy where she's in the crazy armor. And, <laughs> I mean, I hate but to be also, that guy, but why don't they make the airplane out of the black box? You don't need to be plan. wearing a corset the whole time when you're being superhero, I think. I mean, and then also the uh, the very, very subtle reveal that like, oh, there was a woman who stayed behind and all the men made fun of her. Uh, so the rest of us women could direct Wonder Woman. I mean, be an Amazon. Uh, and then it's Linda Carter at the end. Linda Carter is like beloved. Did people shit on Linda Carter like oh, back in the not. day? I hope not. Uh, that was actually a a moment of genuine delight. Like I full on grabbed Bonnie's oh, arm. I thought it was it was, it was yeah. super sweet. It yeah. was cute. I thought it was cool. Although, by the way, I was the only person in the group of uh, of, of four that were with us that uh, were watching it that knew who the fuck she was. What? They had none no! of them knew. None of them knew. Oh, that's a bummer. Uh, also, like, uh, Wonder Woman definitely killed those kids playing soccer in the middle of the road, where first she goes faster than a truck and scoops oh, them up. Oh, and then she lands on and them. And then she uses them to pad her landing where she could thunk a thunk a thunk a thunk a thunk and, and like, she doesn't even get out of the road. Are so dead. <laughs> Those kids are so dead. I like uh, I, I like the part of the movie where uh, Wishes created the Israel-Palestine 2 conflict. <laughs> I thought that was a very uh, and, and within 20 <laughs> minutes it was about fresh water. <laughs> I but that's part of what I what I just kept me so engaged was like, what does Patty Jenkins think would end the world? Like, like what does she think? How does she see this all coming uh, uh, apart? And it's like, it really is a telling, like, well, first it would be the Israeli-Palestinian. And it's basically like. And I don't, I don't know Patty Jenkins. Maybe she is a 
a scholar at the Brookings Institute in for foreign policy. And she's very, very dialed into all this. But it just kind of feels like if you were talking to somebody at a party and they totally exhausted their knowledge of foreign affairs, <laughs> like like the, the three things that they know about. It's like, well, nuclear weapons <laughs> and Israel and Palestine. <laughs> and uh, I, I, somebody gets a farm. Body switching. Body switching. <laughs> somebody yeah. gets a farm. <laughs> oh, by the way. Oh, right. The farm guy. Could they have leaned in? Make him Reagan or not? I mean. Hmm. Yeah, that was oh, an that interesting was decision enough. to not have because I feel like that movie like would have him... been great, but just like like ah, yeah. I'm a terrible Reagan, <laughs> I'm a terrible Reagan impression. Okay, Pedro Pascal, you better get in here. Oh, sorry, master, like, I am at your command. And if you're not gonna make him Reagan, at least make him fully Martin Sheen, complete with him being Martin Sheen from The West Wing. Uh, yeah. I, I, otherwise, like weird, like low budget. Uh, Martin Sheen? I don't know. All right. We got to stop this so we can All right, we do another go. show uh, in five seconds. All right. Thank you, everybody. We're going to take the stream off. Uh, happy hour coming up at the top of the hour. Heck and yeah, then, man. Uh, Marvel. Everybody watch Captain Marvel between now and then. We're doing yeah. uh, evening Marvel today, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And then we got a daytime one tomorrow. We're, we're still doing them until New Year's nice. Eve. Nice. Uh, all righty, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye. Bye.